Two. Chino, stop using your phone. Why? We thought it's harmless. Uh-uh, you are wrong, my friend. And why am I wrong? Did you know that if you are a regular cell phone user and have used a cell phone for five years or more, you are now 34% more likely to have a parotid tumor? Hi everyone, I am Janelle, I am Shaina, and I am Katrina, and, and we're from FCCLA Franklin High School in Honolulu, Hawaii. Aloha! We are here to tell you the unknown side of cell phone. In this project, we were able to meet FACS, Family and Consumer Science, standards through this project. One of them is standard 12.1.1, analyze physical, emotional, social, spiritual, and intellectual development because we illustrated how using cell phone can influence children's behaviors and baby's development. We, say, we cited current studies that have gathered information regarding this topic. We were also able to fulfill standard 2.4.1, summarize types of technology that affect family and consumer decision making because in this project, we illustrated how using cell phones can influence how cell phone cost sometimes plays a role or my parents don't buy their children a phone. More so, we also explained why cell phones are more important than an iPod. And lastly, standard 1.1.2 analyzed the effects of social, economic, and technological change on work and family dynamics. Because we explained how using cell phone can change family relationship. Radiation can cause a lot of serious diseases. One of those is breast cancer, which is common for women. A 39 years old Californian, Donna James, a woman with no other risk factors of having a cancer, came down with a multifocal breast cancer. A multifocal breast cancer is when you have more than one tumor, all of which came from the original tumor. After long research and studies, two specialists found out when they connected the tumor dots, the pattern of cancer distributions literally lined up perfectly with the shape of her cell phone. As it turns out, the young lady had a curious habit of tucking her cell phone into her bra. Another bad effect of mobile phone, especially for pregnant women, is that it can cause their babies to have developmental problems. In 2008, researchers in Sweden analyzed data of nearly 13,000 children that showed exposure to cell phones while in the womb, just two or three times a day by their mother, were linked to behavioral difficulties. Overall, the study revealed that mothers who use mobile phones were 54% more likely to have children with behavioral problems. The health problem from cell phones that men can acquire is brain tumor and sperm alteration. An Italian businessman named Innocente Marcolini fell ill after using a handset at work for up to 6 hours every day for 12 years. He didn't know what caused this, but a respected oncologist, Angelo Gino Levi, along with the neurosurgeon, Giapso Grasso, gave Mr. Marconini the answer to his question. They said electromagnetic radiation from mobile phones and cordless phones can damage cells, making tumors more likely. His tumor was found in a trigeminal nerve, close to where the phone touched his head. It is not only men that can have this illness, even women can too. According to an Italian report published in the Journal of Andrology July 2011 issue, researchers in the United States and around the world have found that the electromagnetic radiation emitted by cell phones may decrease sperm count and can damage sperm quality. The result was that those who carried their phones in their pockets had a lower sperm concentration. Who is at greater risk? Sadly, children and teens are at the greatest risk for any of these diseases especially for the parotid gland tumors and brain tumors as their skull bones are thinner which will allow for greater penetration of cell phone radiation. Children's cells reproduce more quickly, so they are susceptible to aggressive cell phone. Children, should be, children also face a far greater lack of exposure. According to Professor Lynette Hardell of Sweden, those who begin using cell phones heavily as teenagers have four to five times more chance to develop brain cancer as young adults. Although these things sound scary, there are some things that we can do for prevention, such as Limit calls and keep calls short. Even a two-minute call has been found to alter the natural electrical activity of the brain from an hour afterwards. Children should be allowed to use the cell phone only in cases of emergency. Don't put the cell phone in your pocket or belt. Do not use cell phones in enclosed metal spaces, such as vehicles or elevators, where devices may use more power to establish connection. Lastly, avoid talking and start texting, but not when you're driving. 
With the choice and technology of today, consumers are having a hard time selecting which technology to buy. For instance, a cell phone or an iPod. Both technologies hold something that the other one doesn't. However, I think we all can agree that cell phone is more important than an iPod. A cell phone enables us to communicate with others. Parents can keep in contact with their children. Although a cell phone is more important, it is quite costly. Together, three of our families spend close to $7,000 a year. With our very tight economy, that, it, that is a lot of money for our families just for the convenience of phones. More so, we need to watch our radiation and keep healthy. Now, after learning all these things, we need to know how much radiation our cell phone emit and to know if it justifies the cost. In California, lawmakers are considering forcing cell phone companies to post how much radiation each phone emits on the cell phone packages. An app for smartphones regarding radiation has also been made called Dawkon. T-A-W-K-O-N. Dawkon allows you to use your mobile phone responsibly by notifying you when your phone is emitting an elevated level of radiation and it tells you exactly how to reduce exposure to it. As you can see, smartphones which have an internet capability emit more radiation compared to older models which are limited to basic talk and text. A case has also been invented. Inventors from Australia invented a case called cell safe case that protects your brain from radiation. A cell safe case has an antenna inside that redirects the radiation away from the user's head and not through the back of the phone. That table shows how much safer you are when you have the cell safe case on. That column right there shows the radiation each phone emits without the cell safe case. While this column shows the radiation each phone emits with the cell safe case. As you can see, the higher the number, the greater the radiation. Cell safe case can improve mobile phone safety up to 97.4%. We have observed that families really spend quality time together. When they do, many family members have their cell phone that distracts from communication. For example, when a family eats dinner together, some members spend more time texting or playing on their cell phones rather than actually communicating with each other. Mobile phone changes the dynamic of family life for both children as well as parents are both distracted by technology. We presented this project into three different groups to raise an awareness of the different health hazards happen people. On January 29, 2013, we presented this project in to Oahu Country 4-H workshop, which took place at Franklin High School. On February 13, 2013, we presented it to Farrington High School Health Academy and Farrington High School Health Class. We got feedbacks from people saying that we have opened up their minds to the possibility that cell phones can indeed harm our health. Overall, cell phones are dangerous to our health because it can cause us to have some serious diseases such as breast cancer, developmental problems, brain tumor, and sperm alteration. Just be aware of the dangers that cell phones can present to general public, especially to young people like us. From our research, we have learned a lot and hope you have learned something too. If you have more questions about this topic, talk to your doctor or to someone who has more knowledge about this topic. Especially when you are suffering fatigue, headaches, sleep disruptions, altered memory function, poor concentration, visual spatial awareness, and many more. It might be the cell phone. Thank you for listening. Are there any questions?